Is PT school difficult? That's a common question that a lot of individuals have, especially those who want to become physical therapists. So today I'm going to give you seven factors that are going to help you determine whether or not PT school is going to be hard for you. So let's get to it. Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Hey, if you haven't met me before, my name's Jim. I'm a physical therapist and I love what it is that I do. I love helping other individuals become physical therapists themselves. And I'm extremely passionate about sharing my knowledge and expertise in ways that are helpful for the general public. So if you fall into either of those two camps, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so that you're getting all the content that I'm putting out. All right, with that all being said, let's get to today's question. All right, so today we're talking about whether or not PT school is hard. And there's a lot to unpack with that statement. So let's start with this. Hard is going to be something that you're going to define however you want to. Our perceptions of hard kind of vary from one individual to another. But we're also going to talk about, well, what are we, what are we considering hard to be in terms of school itself? I'm going to address that, but I want to start off here by just saying that there's a lot of individuals who get into PT school and they never have a problem from day one. There's other individuals who just struggle to keep their head, up, uh, head above water from day one. And everywhere, everyone else falls somewhere in between on that spectrum. Now, the other thing that's important to address is the fact that whether or not you're finding PT school to be extremely challenging or not, I want you to understand that it's important to work hard while you're in the program. If you're not being challenged, still work hard and find a way to challenge yourself. And if you're already working hard and being challenged, I want you to understand that's a good thing because that's gonna give you the growth that you need in all sorts of facets to help you become the best physical therapist possible. So I want you to understand that struggle and challenge is a good thing to fight through. And I encourage you to fight through all of that as you go through PT school, because I want you to become the best possible therapist you can become on all fronts. So I want you to acknowledge as we get into this, that it's good to have a challenge in PT school. Now let's just dive right into the, the factors that I wanna talk about today in helping you understand whether or not PT school is gonna be hard for you. The other thing that I wanna address real quick is obviously I can't cover everything within one single video. So if you're in PT school or you're a PT and you've gone through school and you feel there's other important factors and tips that you wanna share, be sure to leave them in the comment section below so that you can give your insight and help other individuals who are trying to either get into PT school or are in PT school right now. All right, so factor number one, I want you to understand that PT school is either gonna be a lot easier or a lot more difficult or somewhere in between based on the amount of kind of prerequisite knowledge you have about the body and whether or not you're deficient in the things that you kind of need to know heading into the program. When I talk about that, what I'm saying is there's, there's a certain amount of material that you should have covered in your undergraduate courses that you've hopefully retained so that again, when you get into PT school, you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to brush up on those concepts and relearn that material because the more you can just focus on what's being presented to you in school right away and not have to go back and brush up on these other concepts, the better off you're gonna be. Now, a lot of that, hopefully, you know, you remember your basic anatomy from undergraduate anatomy, things like introductory physiology, exercise physiology. You don't have to be experts in these, but the more you know and understand heading into PT school, the better off you're gonna be. Now, a lot of that you've hopefully, again, learned from undergraduate studies, but real world experience counts a heck of a lot too. So if you have a lot of experience volunteering in clinics, aside from just what you had to do for part of maybe your application requirements, the more you have, the better off you're gonna be. So that's factor number one. Again, just if you're deficient in prerequisite knowledge, that's gonna make PT school really rough. That's gonna be a rough onboarding process and you don't want that. Now, the good news is that if you're not in PT school yet, you can really start to brush up on all of that now so that you can just hit the ground running when you're in school. All right, the second factor that's really gonna help you understand whether or not PT school is gonna be difficult for you is looking at the material that you're covering in, in school. Now, again, there's a little bit more to unpack with that, so let's break it down. There's kind of three things we wanna think about with this. One is the actual complexity of the material. That's gonna be an issue in and of itself. Then you gotta look at the volume of material that you're gonna cover while you're in PT school and the rate at which you're gonna cover it. All three of those factors together can really influence whether PT school is gonna be hard or be a struggle for you, be a grind, whatever you wanna call it. And it's important to understand that even if you're someone who doesn't have a challenge with the complexity of material, right? You know, if, if that complexity is things like learning your rules of arthrokinematics, 
your roll and glide rules, whether it's, again, functional movement principles and all these other sort of things, even if you're someone who does really good with the complexity material, the fact of the matter is you're still going to be incredibly busy in the program. There's a ton of material you're always learning, tons of assignments and quizzes and exams and practical exams, all these types of things. And then in addition to that, the other thing you have to factor in is how quickly you move through all that. So maybe you could learn all that material relatively easily if you had more time, but the rate at which it goes at, it, it might make it a big challenge for you based on other factors that we're going to talk about here. So keep that all in mind. There's a lot of material you cover. It can be complex depending on, again, how your brain works and, and your, your comfort level with that, as well as, again, the speed at which you're learning all this. So keep those in mind because that's all going to greatly influence whether you find PT school to be hard or not. Now, real quick, the other thing I want to mention about that before I move on to the third factor is the courses that most students universally say are the most challenging for PT school are gross anatomy and clinical neuroscience or neuroanatomy. Both those courses, there's just a lot of material you're given. And again, you have to learn it in a relatively quick time frame. Again, it's, it's different for everyone, but those are some big meaty courses that you really have to make sure you're really, really giving your best efforts towards. All right, factor number three. This factor we're talking about the difference between how grading works in PT school compared to your undergraduate studies. Now in undergrad, you just had to get good grades in each and every course. And again, if you did good enough, you pass. And then if you do good enough, you get into PT school. But we have to look at this a little bit differently in PT school because PT school works largely off kind of a pass fail concept. And you walk what I call an academic tightrope when you're in PT school. You're expected to have good grades. Most schools, again, if, if you're getting anything below a letter grade of B or about 83%, it's essentially considered a fail. You're expected to do good in the program and you typically get about three strikes before you're out. So when I was in PT school, how it worked, you're allowed to get two B minuses in your program. You couldn't get anything below a C, but if you got three B minuses or anything below that, you wound up either being decelerated from the program. So you had to wait until next year and you had to join the class beneath you while retaking some of those courses that you got low grades in, or you just got kicked out of the program. So there's not a ton of room for error, especially when you think about if you get decelerated, okay, maybe you're not kicked out of the program, but you're a whole entire year behind now. You've lost essentially a year's worth of income because you're held back a whole entire year. So it's a little bit more stressful. There, there can be a little bit more sensation of pressure because again, there's, there's, there's not as much room for error. Now, provided you take your studies pretty seriously, you shouldn't have to worry about that, but that's certainly not the case with all students out there. So keep the grades in mind because that can make school more challenging. Okay, so now number four, we're going to talk about the fact that PT school is going to be a rough ride if your time management skills are not on point. Remember how I said before that even if you don't find the material complex, you're going to likely find yourself staying really busy in school. Well, when you factor in, the, you know, all these things of you're taking a bunch of courses where you have to get good grades, you have tons of assignments, quizzes, checkouts and practical examinations, all these different factors, you are staying busy. And what happens is if you don't respect the program in terms of how busy it's going to keep you and you don't do your assignments on time or you, you finish them at the last minute, your grades can start to suffer, your performance suffers and everything kind of starts to snowball and things fall apart on you. So you need to understand that whether you're, you're an A-plus student all the way or you, you fight like crazy in school, you need to have good time management skills. The worse your time management skills are in PT school, I promise you, the more challenging it's going to be to keep your grades up, to make sure that you understand all the material as well as you need to, and all of those types of factors that are really, really going to weigh in to your overall success in school. Now, the good news here is that for the most part, as long as you're reasonable with your time management, you're going to be okay. But a lot of students do shoot themselves in the foot by not factoring in the amount of time that it takes for them to do good quality work on assignments or really learn material to the point where it's just they can rapid fire it out of their head, not even having to think twice about it. So as long as you're taking your time management skills seriously, you shouldn't have too much to worry about. All right. Factor number five. What I'm going to talk about here is is something that I don't think a lot of students heading into PT school truly grasp. But I've seen it play out with my own eyes a number of times between the cohort that I was in, the cohort beneath me, and a lot of other individuals that I know who have been in PT programs all over the US. And so what I'm talking about here is that there is a difference between the knowledge you have up here 
and your ability to apply that knowledge. The way it works in PT school is knowing everything up here is step number one, but then being able to apply it is step number two. And you can have a lot of great academic students who have no problem with written exams, and again, with knowing things and concepts up here, but have a hard time translating it into effective clinical decision-making for when they're doing practical examinations or they have to demonstrate hands-on techniques, they can really run into trouble with a lot of that. So again, I've seen it play out time and time again, where, and I, I put myself into this category as well too. There's a lot of things that were easy for me to know up here, but I had a harder time putting it into more of a clinical context, determining which type of technique I was gonna use during an, uh, a practical examination, which type of clinical decision-making skills I was gonna use to help me further along in, in doing something for these types of uh, evaluations. It, it's a different ball game with that and it takes practice, it takes work. But what you need to understand is just because you know it up here does not mean that again, you can instantly translate it into amazing hands-on skills, amazing techniques, amazing abilities to kind of conceptually think through and problem solve for a lot of the things you're gonna be up against in PT school. So keep that in mind, because that's a critical factor that's gonna really gauge how hard you consider PT school to be. Okay, and factor number six here. Now, this isn't directly tied along to the academics of PT school and all that, but it does factor into school, so we're gonna talk about it here. I'm talking all about the financial stress that comes along with being in this type of program. The bottom line here is you are paying a lot of money to be in this program, and it is stressful to take out student loans, it is stressful to live on a tight budget. Financial stress will bleed into a lot of PT school for you. Your, your energy is so precious, and, and again, how you're able to focus and concentrate can really be influenced by things like stress or financial situations. And so if you have a little bit more of a rockier financial situation, you might find that bleeding into your overall performance in PT school one way or another. So it is important to keep that in mind because that does happen to students. And I was one of those students where that financial stuff was just, I found it to be a challenge. I didn't like having to take out tons and tons of loans. And again, it, it does wear on you. So I want you to keep that in mind. It is a factor in one way or another that can make PT school a little bit more hard, a little bit more challenging, depending on how you're viewing it and depending on your overall financial situation. So keep that factor in mind. All right, and factor number seven. Now, if you know anything about me in my videos, you know I like to save my personal favorite factor or issue or tip or whatever we're gonna call it until the very end. And so here, we're just gonna come right out and say that just because you're in PT school, it doesn't mean that life outside of school stops. What happens with that is again, you're already under enough stress and pressure in PT school a lot of the times one way or another, but you're still gonna maybe have family issues or relationship issues or some of those financial issues that we talked about. And what that does is it pulls you in different directions while you're trying to, again, also get yourself through school. You're trying to give your best efforts on learning and studying or putting in quality effort into an assignment. But when life is pulling you in all these different directions and you're trying to balance all of that while focusing on school, that becomes really, really challenging. And graduate school works like that where in undergrad, a lot of times, now this isn't everyone here, but for a lot of individuals, undergrad's different because you maybe have a little more of a uh, a safety net, so to speak. You're living at home. You have maybe fewer responsibilities. Graduate school, for a lot of people, that changes. And so again, you just kind of have more things pulling at you that you have to balance and figure out while also navigating the PT school road itself. And that does make PT school a little bit more challenging in different ways. And so I know we're not talking directly about the program itself, but we have to acknowledge that, again, there's life factors that will bleed into PT school and you need to understand that so again you're not caught off guard by that so you can better prepare for it and so you can be better ready to take it on when you're in school okay everyone so those are the factors i wanted to address with you and again if you feel that there's factors that i haven't covered or ones that would be helpful for other individuals to know please leave them in the comment section below i believe you can really help some other individuals out if that's the case so don't be afraid to leave your comments below I'm gonna leave it at that for today's video. Again, I want you to understand that working hard in PT school is a good thing. Whether you're having an easy time or you're struggling like crazy, working hard is a good thing. It will get you to grow. It will develop you in the ways you need to develop. Yes, it is not fun to go through. I understand that. It is something that is often unpleasant, but you will be better off in the end for it. So keep that in mind. 
I encourage you to keep on fighting wherever you're at, whatever level you want to get to, whether you're in school and you want to keep going, or whether you're trying to get into school, or maybe this isn't even about school for you, you're just wanting to be someone who grows into the best person they possibly can become. Understand that challenges will develop you in the ways that you need to be developed, but you have to embrace it, lean into it, and if you do that, good things are going to happen. Okay, everyone, so that's it for today. I'm hoping you got something good out of it. I'm hoping you're able to take some of this material and run with it and use it in ways that's going to help you grow, help you flourish, help you do better in school or wherever you're currently at. So I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you're all doing well, and I will see you in the next video.